Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and welcome to the 34th Annual Firefighter of the Year Awards. I'm Doug Meehan from WCVB-TV in Boston. Today our colors will be presented by the Brockton Fire Department Honor Guard. Please remain standing for our national anthem performed by Todd Angeli and our inviction, uh, uh, invocation excuse me, from Reverend Bruce Arbor, Chief Chaplain, Massachusetts Corps of Fire Chaplains. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched who were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, he proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Lord, we come before you in this day with our hearts filled with gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity to present those who will be celebrated in this day, for their courage, their dedication, and their valor. We thank you for the gift of safe passage and the strength and the courage to serve our communities in this great commonwealth. Bless this time that we have together. Lift up these celebrations, and may they reach out to the world, reminding them that we are ready and able to serve. In your holy name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Reverend Arbor, thank you. And Todd, thank you as well ready to have the puck drop in a minute after that. But. <laughs> also, thank you to the Greater Boston, Brockton, and Worcester Pipes and Drum Band and the Honor Guard from Brockton for helping us kick off this, the 34th Annual Firefighter of the Year Awards. At this time, I will dismiss the Honor Guards again. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, welcome on in. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I know I speak for everyone here on stage this afternoon, as well as my colleagues over at WCVB, when I say that it is a true honor uh, to be recognized the members of the Massachusetts Fire Service. You folks up here on stage and in the audience, you are truly the unsung heroes of our communities. I have had the great pleasure to emcee this event since 2019, and I'm always amazed at not only the bravery, but the humility, the empathy of the firefighters that we meet. And I know you will all say it's just your job, but this takes a special kind of person to go into this field, so we all thank you. Many of you may know that I have a cousin that's on the Milford Fire Department. Um, he's actually getting ready to retire. So and another that worked in the fire service on the investigative side. And I'm also reminded of the heroism frequented in the uh, newsroom. We rarely get to spend more than, say, a minute or two on a story. And sadly, often the tragedies are the ones that grab the headlines. So today, we will recount many of the stories you may have heard about or read about or watched on the news, but perhaps in greater detail. And yes, celebrate the men and women behind the helmets and that heavy bunker gear. We have a lot of groups being awarded today. It speaks to the teamwork that is part of the fire service. Many of our honorees were off duty. They were simply with their family and then jumped into action. New England weather also played a role in many of the incidents and it's not just about the raging fires. You'll hear about water rescues, vehicle extr extrications, high-risk mask evacuations, and more. So to begin today's ceremony, it is my pleasure to introduce Secretary of Public Safety and Security, Terrence Reedy. Thank you, Doug. It's an honor to be here today and to recognize the honorees, their departments, families, and loved ones. Welcome back to Worcester also known as the hometown of Mike Papani. That's why he's sitting in the front row right over there. I'd also like to thank State Fire Marshal John Davin for his leadership in the fire service community and the Department of Fire Services for their significant contributions to the Commonwealth. The Firefighter of the Year Award provides us with a welcome opportunity to pay tribute to our Commonwealth's heroes and to applaud extraordinary acts of bravery, sacrifice, and compassion demonstrated by some of our most courageous public servants. The bravery and dedication performed by today's award recipients are considered remarkable, even by the high standards set for Massachusetts firefighters. We know they would humbly say that they were just doing their jobs, but that doesn't make the job any less demanding. We'll hear about remarkable rescues or through ordinary days off, without warning, turned into moments of life or death action. And we'll hear about the innovation and the professionalism of the firefighters who use their tools, talents, and training to help them during times of great, the, their greatest need. From chemical spills to high angle rope rescues to electric vehicle fires to countless other dangers, our firefighters are trained and prepared for any crisis, always to expect the unexpected, to imagine the unimaginable. The challenges have become more varied and complex and the job continues to evolve. However, for those who pursue a career in the fire services, their dedication, compassion, and willingness to sacrifice remain fundamental to how they arrive at what they do at each scene that comes their way. We are all profoundly aware of the demands of those who dedicate themselves to a life of service. We're also mindful of the great sacrifices required of the families who love and support our public servants. I want to extend the Commonwealth's respect and appreciation to the loved ones of today's recipients. Thank you. Today's acknowledgement of your loved ones, loved ones belongs just as much with them as it does with you, so thank you. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce another proud supporter of the Massachusetts Fire Services, the 73rd Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Maura Healy. Thank you so much, Secretary Reedy. I want to thank you, Deputy Secretary C. Terry, and all the members of EOPS for 
um, what you do day in and day out. And certainly, um, I want folks to know that when I started this job, Secretary Reedy said one thing to me early, I need to be in Worcester on this day. So thank you for making that clear to me back in January. To State Fire Marshal da uh, John Davin, thank you for the work that you do. Chief Ona and all the fire chiefs who are here today, our elected officials, who I know are huge supporters. We have Rep. Jim O'Day here, Rep. Paulino, District Attorney Joe Early, among others. Um, great to see you all, and I know how much you support our firefighters. It's an honor to be able to be here today to pay tribute to so many Massachusetts heroes. These awards recognize bravery and service that are truly remarkable, even by, as Mr. Secretary said, the remarkable standards set by our fire service every day. To every firefighter here, and to every firefighter who's not here because you're out protecting our communities, I wanna say thank you on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I also wanna say thank you to your spouses, to your families, because their support, your support and sacrifice makes the work, including the heroic work, of our firefighters possible, and we are grateful. In a world of multiplying risks and dangers, we cannot overstate how reassuring it is to know that there are teams of men and women out there dedicated to keeping us safe. Because when we don't know who else to call, we call the fire department. I remember that as a kid growing up. My dad was a member of a volunteer force in our little small town, and I remember the calls that would come in. When you don't know who else to call, you call the fire department. And no matter what that emergency or call is about, firefighters are there to respond and always there to help. It may be in the middle of a cold winter night or on the hottest day of the year. It might be an elevator rescue, or pulling a child through the ice. It might be a family home or an entire block at risk of being lost. No matter when or what happens, firefighters put everything on the line, risking their safety to make our lives and communities safer. I look forward to hearing the stories of today's awardees. We'll hear about daring rescues from structure fires, rushing rivers, and burning cars. We'll hear about a 10 alarm fire and a mass casualty accident that required the highest levels of operational awareness. We'll hear about firefighters who were on duty and firefighters who dropped everything on their day off to help strangers in sudden peril. And we'll hear a lot about teamwork. Because in the fire service, just like everyday life, we can all do more as partners and as a team than we can ever do alone. This year's 2023 award winners have truly distinguished themselves by their actions. And the truth they exemplify is that firefighters bring courage and dedication to their work every single day, everywhere in every community of our state. That's why in Massachusetts, we will always work together to support our firefighters. Their health, physical and mental, their safety and their well-being. As dangerous as a fire, rescue or hazmat response might be, everyone here also knows that occupational cancer is the greatest threat our firefighters face. And I wanna thank Secretary Reedy and State Fire Marshal Devine for Davin for their continuing to move the ball forward with our cancer awareness, prevention, and early detection programs, um, including this year new ultrasound screenings, mammograms, and other measures announced this fall. We're proud to recognize our firefighters and even more proud to support them, just as they support our communities every single day. Congratulations again to all of this year's awardees. And I know what's really special is that behind every name and group mentioned here, 
there are scores more who would have been ready to step up when the time called. That's what makes this group special. That's what makes firefighting special. We wish you all um, a very happy Thanksgiving with your loved ones and know that on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we are so grateful that you give of yourselves and that you give in service to our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Governor And yes, You are correct in the sense that the stories you're about to hear are moving in so many different ways. It is remarkable. Um, and uh, we're just glad we could be here today to do just that. I'd like to recognize the Heroic Awards Committee who had the honor and challenging task of reviewing all of the nominations. And we do ask that you hold your applause till the end. And we ask that you please stand as your name is called. Secretary of Public Safety, Terrence Reedy, Deputy Secretary Susan Terry, State Fire Marshal John Davin, Chief Peter Burke, President, Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, Chief James Vona, Immediate Past President, Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, Richard McKinnon, Jr., President, Professional Fire, uh, Firefighters of Massachusetts, Captain Michael McCullough, Massachusetts Call Volunteer Firefighter Association, Chief Patrick Purcell II, make that second Vice President, Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, and Paul Davies of the Tapper Club. Thank you. We would also like to recognize Under Secretary Andrew Peck, Deputy State Fire Marshal Mirabel Fournier, and all of the legislators and city officials who are here today, and of course, a special thank you to our host city of Worcester. Thank you. All right, now begins some of these stories, and I hope you're holding on tight because they are remarkable. Sometimes I'm, I have a hard time getting through them because they are so emotional. But first award this afternoon is a category named for Norman Knight. He's the founder of the 100 Club. Mr. Knight is widely known throughout the region for his truly phenomenal commitment to first responders in their time of need. The club's motto, we care for those who care for us. This isn't just a tagline, it's been his calling for more than 60 years. The State Firefighters Memorial, Hyperbaric Chamber, and many training resources were largely funded through Knight's generosity. Governor Healy, would you please step forward? I call to the stage from the Sunderland Fire Department, Lieutenant Matthew Morin. <laughs> Lieutenant Morin is passionate about fire safety and education, and he doesn't want to be a person you only see in the times of stress and emergencies. He has logged in thousands of hours teaching fire safety and being a role model for youth in Sunderland. He adapts to the audience, knowing that what may work for the younger students may not be effective with older students, much less older adults. Two years ago, he and Sunderland police officer created a first responder safety festival, which this year was regional and included more than 50 public safety agencies. The lieutenant also helped develop a training program that sets professional standards for working respectfully and professionally with members of the LGBTQ community He's presented to more than 2,000 firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, police officers all across the United States. And earlier this year at the DFS Fire and Life Safety Education Conference, he not only led a workshop on this topic, but also addressed about 200 attendees and was runner-up for Educator of the Year. Lieutenant Morin works to help fire service professionals understand and utilize foundational history, terminology, and strategies to carry out their professional duties while respecting all the identities that compromise of our, uh, comprise of our community. In recognition of his tireless commitment to fire safety education and the public that he serves, the Commonwealth is pleased to present Lieutenant Matthew Morin with the 2023 Norman Knight Excellence in Community Service Award.
Got to get an extra photo for the Facebooks, I think. So. <laughs> we will now present citations for meritorious conduct. Please welcome to the stage from the Hopkinton Fire Department, Deputy Chief Gary Doherty, Jr., Lieutenant John Sheridan, Firefighter Jim Gosselin, Firefighter Maxwell Hoadley, Firefighter Douglas Lewis III, Firefighter Jared Taranto, and Ashland Fire Lieutenant Anthony Duca, who is unable to be here today. It was shortly after 1.10 in the morning on April 9th, Hopkinton Fire received a call for a structure fire. The first crews on scene found heavy fires showing and bystanders reporting that two people were still inside. While firefighters started to attack the fire from the outside, Lieutenant Sheridan ordered a second alarm, requested mutual aid, and shifted his focus to rescuing the occupants. Deputy Chief Doherty, who is currently serving as the department's interim chief, arrived moments later, and the two men immediately undertook efforts to get inside, only to find one entrance that was winterized and blocked by furniture. Once they made entry, they began a search and quickly located an adult male inside. They removed him from that building and then transferred his care to the crews outside. Deputy Chief Doherty and Lieutenant Sheridan then returned to the building to search for the second person and found her in a rear bedroom. During a very challenging patient extrication, through an interior hallway dense with smoke, Lieutenant Duca helped remove the occupant to the crews outside. Both occupants taken to Milford Regional Medical Center, although tragically, the first patient succumbed to his injuries soon afterwards. But, thanks to the simultaneous search, rescue, fire attack, and patient care by Ladder 1, Engine 2, and mutual aid, she survived long enough for her family members to say goodbye. In recognition of their quick thinking and rapid action, the Commonwealth is pleased to present members of the Hopkinton Ashland Fire Department's with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Please welcome from the Brockton Fire Department, Captain Michael McKenna, Lieutenant James Dubow, Firefighter Ryan Doherty, Firefighter Alicia Elay, Firefighter Corey Lacey, Firefighter Edward Lee, and Firefighter James Knee. The Brockton Fire Department was called to a fire in a multifamily home shortly before 1 a.m. on February 12th. Upon arrival, firefighters saw a heavy fire and several people trapped on the upper floors. As flames tore through the building, pushing towards the occupants, Captain McKenna ordered firefighter Nee and Doherty to stretch a hose line to the side of the home. Lieutenant Dubow directed firefighters Lee, Lacey, and Eli to throw a ground ladder to the victim's locations. As an aerial ladder was being brought into position and facing heavy smoke fire and high heat, the crews were able to rescue five people through a window over the ground ladder and down to safety. All seven occupants, most of them teenagers, were brought to Good Samaritan Medical Center for injuries that were not life-threatening. In recognition of their life-saving actions, the Commonwealth is pleased to present Brockton firefighters with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. So, a lot of people in Brockton that want photos. Thank you.
I call to the stage Chelmsford firefighter Josh Abbott. On the afternoon of June 17th, firefighter Abbott was driving back from a camping trip up in New Hampshire with his wife and two children. As he passed through East Kingston, he came upon a single car collision with an occupant trapped inside. That vehicle had crashed into a utility pole just moments before, and the only public safety presence was another off-duty firefighter who had stopped to help. That vehicle was on fire. The passenger compartment was filled with smoke. Without any protective equipment and disregarding his own personal safety, firefighter Abbott stopped his car and quickly jumped into action to help. They freed the injured driver and removed her from the car seconds before it exploded and became fully engulfed. The woman was taken by ambulance to an area hospital, injured but alive, thanks to firefighter Abbott's bold and decisive action. For his bravery, skill, and instinct to render aid that likely saved a life, the Commonwealth presents firefighter Josh Abbott with the 2023 Governor's Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Please welcome from the New Bedford Fire Department, Captain Michael Dillon, Lieutenant Ernest Ledender, Firefighter Kyle Martin, Firefighter Jonathan Parkin, and Firefighter Renald Russo III. It was on the afternoon of March 28th, New Bedford Fire was called to a Cushnet Avenue for a fire in a rooming house with some residents trapped and others jumping from the windows. They found the four-story building well involved with occupants in the windows of the upper stories. A general alarm was ordered with all members reporting along with mutual aid from surrounding communities. Firefighters immediately began heroic efforts to rescue the occupants. Ladder 4 deployed ground and aerial ladders to rescue victims on the second, third, and fourth floors. Engine 9 raised a 40-foot ground ladder in a valiant effort to reach an occupant with fatal injuries. Engine 8 advanced the hose line to the third floor to fight the fire and search for more residents. Engines 1, 5, and 7 and ladder 1 assisted with rescues and fire suppression. The roof of that building collapsed and with rapidly deteriorating interior conditions, crews were forced to evacuate. While the building sustained catastrophic damage, they were able to contain the blaze and save nearby homes and businesses. Five injured occupants were transported to the hospital and survived their injuries, but tragically, two more lost their lives. For their heroic and coordinated efforts to save lives from a raging fire, the Commonwealth is pleased to present these New Bedford firefighters with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Thank you all. Please welcome from the Chelsea Fire Department, Captain Michael Gerska, Firefighter Christian Avalenda, and Firefighter Stephen Waxman. Shortly after midnight on August 17, 2022, Chelsea firefighters respond to Cottage Street for a three-decker house fire with reports of people trapped inside. They observed heavy fire on all floors in the rear of the building and saw an occupant trying to escape the flames through a third floor window. Firefighter Avalanda urged this person not to jump as he and firefighter Waxman threw a 35 foot ground ladder with the assistance of bystanders. Captain Gerska and firefighter Avalanda then climbed the ladder and helped the occupant down to safety. All other occupants were able to escape on their own. Six people, including two firefighters, 
transported to the hospital for medical care that day. The fire went to five alarms, but firefighters were able to contain it to the building of origin. For their life-saving efforts, the Commonwealth presents Captain Michael Gerska, firefighters Christian Avalenda and Stephen Waxman with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Thank you all. All right, Chicopee Fire Department, where are you? I said, if I can get through Chicopee Fire Department names, it'll be the hardest part of the day. So please be with, bear with me. Welcome from the Chicopee Fire Department. Deputy Chief Peter Jerusik, Captain Robert McQueen, Lieutenant Robert Tatralt, Lieutenant Kirsten Theron, Lieutenant Adam Anishek, Firefighter Preston Bailey, Firefighter Joe Berge, who's not here, Firefighter Drew Broshaka, who's not here as well, Firefighter Nathan Cavallo, Firefighter Remembo Guldima Harada, Firefighter John Skaza, Firefighter Matthew Turjan, and Firefighter Tyler Vaccaro. <coughs> Told you, it's a mouthful. <laughs> it was shortly after noon on Christmas Eve of 2022. Chicopee firefighters responded to a structure fire on Chicopee Street with a child trapped on the third floor with 10 degree temperatures causing immediate freezing and water supply issues. They, they battled both the elements and the heavy fire blocking their access from the porch. Lieutenant Tatral began a transitional attack to suppress the raging fire and allow entry. While the crews continued to attack the fire, Lieutenant Theron stretched a second hose up a ground ladder to their position. The combination of hose lines knocked down the fire allowing Captain McQueen and fire firefighter Skaza to make entry. With the assistance of firefighter Anishek, they were able to locate and rescue that young boy. The drastic difference in temperatures from the fire room to the exterior caused Captain McQueen's self-contained breathing apparatus face piece to fog and freeze up, limiting his visibility as he descended the stairs. Deputy Chief Jerusik met them on the second floor and brought the child outside to the waiting ambulance. That child had no pulse. That child was not breathing. EMTs resuscitated him en route to the hospital along with a family member who had also been rescued from that home. Tragically, that young boy's injuries were too severe and succumbed to those injuries several days later. But the fact that every step in this incredible response was accomplished within 10 minutes of the initial 911 call gave his loved ones the chance to say goodbye in a place of peace and dignity. For their heroism and teamwork under extreme conditions, the Commonwealth is pleased to present these members from the Chicopee Fire Department with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Service and Conduct. Thank you all. From the East Longmeadow Fire Department, a call to the stage firefighter Matthew Adams and firefighter Brian Drury. And from the West Springfield Fire Department, I call firefighter Nick LaPalm. Why don't you put the Western Mass guys way up and back?
Firefighters Adams and Drury were competing in the annual Westfield River Wild Water Canoe Race on April 22nd when their boat flipped. They were in the water when they heard cries for help and spotted another racer, an older adult in his 70s, unresponsive in the rapids. The firefighter recognized the emergency and pulled that man to calmer waters. And as they did so, Firefighter LaPalm saw that what was happening and in a split second dove from his canoe to help. He fought his way through the rapids to assist them with chest compressions as that patient was propped up on Firefighter Adam's chest out of shallow water. The location along the CSX railroad tracks is densely wooded and remote, and police had to shut down the railway as additional first responders had to search for the scene. Refusing to give up, these three experienced paramedics performed CPR for 30 minutes and then assisted in the lengthy extrication until they could transfer care to local EMTs. Sadly, despite those heroic efforts, doctors were unable to re revive the man at the nearest hospital. And here's the point, firefighters are never truly off duty. For their immediate and selfless action to help a stranger, the Commonwealth presents firefighters Matthew Adams, Brian Drury, and Nick LaPalm with the 2023 Governor's Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Thank you. Call who? Franklin. Franklin. Hey, Franklin. Where's Franklin? He has a sign straight out. He isn't really sure. Yeah. Bring your sign, Franklin. Come on up. Yay. Is that your dad? Go ahead and give him a big hug. There you go. Franklin, you got to high five the governor. <laughs> Probably a future firefighter as well. Please welcome from the New Bedford Fire Department, please, District Chief Stephen Boliu, Boliu, excuse me, District Chief Gary Raposa, Lieutenant Jason Boliu, Lieutenant Kevin Farnworth, Lieutenant Daniel Jackson. Firefighter Jesse Andre, Firefighter Jason Barker, Firefighter Nicholas Corvey, Firefighter Bryce Forte, Firefighter Kenneth Letterno, Firefighter Mark Pacheco, and Firefighter Derek Santos. When New Bedford firefighters arrived at the Roosevelt apartment shortly before midnight on July 18th, they saw a working fire on the fourth floor and immediately called for a second alarm response. It was, clear many that, uh, it was clear that many occupants would need to be rescued from that building. For the next several hours, crews conducted a simultaneous rescue and fire suppression operation. They raised a ground ladder to the third floor, which firefighter Andre went up twice, helping a woman and a young child evacuate through a window. Lieutenant Bullio and Firefighter Pacheco rescued a resident over the fire escape from the apartment adjacent to the main fire. Lieutenant Farnworth and Firefighter Corvey helped evacuate residents to the lobby after searching the fourth and fifth floors. Lieutenant Jackson and Firefighters Fortes and Santos rescued two tenants through smoke-filled hallways and under the direction of District Fire Chiefs Bullio and Raposa, this team saved five people and several pets from a blaze that could have otherwise have turned tragic. 
For their bravery, quick thinking, and life-saving skills, the Commonwealth presents these members from the New Bedford Fire Department with a 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Deputy Chief Gerald McSada from the Long Meadow Fire Department. It was on the evening of October 20th, 2022, Deputy, Deputy Chief McSada was on his way home after his shift when he heard the call come in for a residential structure fire. He was the first one to arrive and found an older adult on the front steps with heavy smoke showing from the front door and eaves of this ranch-style home. When he asked if anybody else was inside, the man was unable to speak. The deputy chief immediately began a 360-degree size up and spotted another older adult inside a smoke-filled room. With no protective gear, he made entry through a heavy smoke down a hallway to a bedroom. He found the woman weak, confused, and clearly in danger. He was able to escort her quickly outside, both residents transported to the hospital, injured but alive, and they were released the next day. For his quick thinking and life-saving skills, the Commonwealth presents Deputy Chief McSada with the 2023 Governor's Citation for Meritorious Conduct. I call to the stage Firefighter William Cabral of the New Bedford Fire Department, Lieutenant Jay Colbert, or Colbert, from the Somerville Fire Department, Firefighter Richard McKinnon Jr. from the Whitman Fire Department, and Lieutenant Matthew Reddy from the Lynn Fire Department, who is unable to be here today. It was on January 27th, these off-duty firefighters from across Massachusetts we're on a flight to an annual leadership conference hosted by the International Association of Firefighters. And it was during that flight that an 85-year-old man went unconscious and collapsed inside a bathroom. And when the flight crew asked for assistance, they got it. Lieutenants Colbert and Reddy and firefighters Cabral and McKinnon immediately took action. They removed him to the aisle and then began CPR including IV access and medication administration. Working with a nurse who was also on board that flight, these firefighters worked to administer CPR to the patient for more than 90 minutes. Well, his family looked on, and their flight had to be diverted to Omaha, Nebraska. Once on the ground, they briefed the awaiting EMS crews for continued care and transport. For their quick thinking and immediate aid in a tense situation, the Commonwealth is pleased to present Lieutenants Colbert, Reddy, and Firefighters Cabral and McKinnon with the 2023 Governor's Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Usually when you start a story of a bunch of off-duty firefighters from different towns, it's usually not on a flight, but probably having a beer somewhere. So we're glad you were on that flight that day. Yes. <laughs> Colby, excuse me. <laughs> I call to the stage from the Stoneham Fire Department, Firefighter Andrew Chavak 
Firefighter Mike Payon and Firefighter Nick Raleigh. It was on the morning of February 23rd the Stoneham Fire and Police Departments reported to multiple reports of a house fire and gunshots. Police arrived, first went to the back of the house where a person was attempting to shoot open the door to rescue a disabled man trapped inside as the fire raged on in the single family ranch style home. Stoneman and Wakefield crews went to work to attack the fire while firefighters Chabak, Payon, and Raleigh looked for an entrance. Using a ground ladder, they entered a bedroom window that led them straight to a zero visibility environment. The room was directly above the seat of the fire and filled with high heat, heavy smoke, and toxic gases. Firefighters Peone and Raleigh lifted the man up and carried him to the window where firefighter Chavak straddled the window and lifted him out. Wakefield firefighters put him on a stretcher and carried him to the waiting ambulance for transport to Mass General Hospital. These firefighters then worked to bring a second hose line into the first floor to help ventilate the structure. For their heroism and teamwork under extreme conditions, the Commonwealth is pleased to present firefighters Chavak, Peon, and Raleigh with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Please welcome to the stage from the Everett Fire Department, Firefighter Michael O'Donnell and Private Ian Tweeddale. On the afternoon of October 13th, Everett firefighters arrived at a metal recycling and disposable site for a chilling call. An employee had become entangled in a giant mobile shredding machine with one of his legs, legs wedged between the gears. After exhausting all other options, a surgeon was rushed to the scene to assist in the patient's extradition, or extrication, excuse me. Dozens of Everett Fire Department personnel and mutual aid were on site for hours, but these two firefighters stood out for their efforts during that ordeal. Throughout the incident, Firefighter O'Donnell and Private Tweeddale risked their own safety to provide comfort and support to the man as they themselves straddled the gears of that shredder. Firefighter O'Donnell additionally assisted the surgeon during the procedure itself. The patient successfully extricated and brought to the hospital where he received additional treatments and survived. For their calm under pressure and compassionate life-saving skills, the Commonwealth presents Firefighter O'Donnell and Private Tweeddale with a 2023 Governor's Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Thank you, gentlemen. For our next presentation, please welcome State Fire Marshal John Davin. Thank you, Doug. Good afternoon. For this next award, please welcome members of the Hingham Fire Department, the Weymouth Fire Department, and the Rockland Fire Department. One year ago today, an SUV slammed through a glass wall into the Apple store in Hingham. Initial 911 calls suggested eight to 10 injured people, but responding personnel found more than double that number. Every available fire company in Hingham responded to the scene, along with mutual aid from Weymouth and Rockland. Hingham Deputy Chief David Levinson was the first firefighter on scene and observed a mass casualty incident in the truest sense of that term. Employees and shoppers had suffered 
grievous injuries. Several people were pinned between the SUV and the back wall. But this was no ordinary wall. It was one and a half inch thick Corian stone attached with steel studs. At the front and rear of the scene, thousands of pounds of glass and stone were hanging precariously above the responders and the critically injured patients. In the minutes that followed, these firefighters treated and extricated more than 20 badly injured patients from a literal disaster area. They brought all their skills, training, and tools to the task of saving lives. Sadly, one patient suffered mortal injuries and died at the scene. But every other patient who was transported survived. And medical staff later stated that these personnel made the difference between life and death for many of those patients. Deputy Chief Levinson oversaw these rescue operations while also playing a key role himself. He and his team extricated six patients who had been pinned between the vehicle, the wall, and the tables, a process that involved the jaws of life, sawzall tools, and even a tow truck to slowly move the suspect vehicle inch by delicate inch from the damaged stone wall until the victims could be freed. Throughout this process, Deputy Levinson and his team were surrounded by utter chaos, with 800-pound tables pinning additional victims, fire and anti-theft alarms going off, lithium-ion batteries and devices smoking or actively burning, and the driver was still behind the wheel of the SUV. His calm under enormous pressure was nothing short of remarkable. For their steady nerves and teamwork, the Commonwealth presents members of the Hingham, Weymouth, and Rockland Fire Department with a 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Would Hingham Deputy Chief David Levinson please step forward, please. In recognition of Deputy Levinson's exemplary leadership under crisis conditions, I am pleased to present the Stephen D. Cohn Fire Marshal's Award to Hingham Deputy Chief David Levinson. From the Brockton Fire Department, can have Deputy Chief Scott Albanese and Deputy Chief Mark Jetty please to come to the stage. At about 7 a.m. on February 7th, the Brockton Fire Department received a master box alarm that could have spelled disaster. A fire at Signature Healthcare Brockton Hospital one of their area's busiest medical centers. The fire, which began in an electrical room, was extending to storage rooms and to the cafeteria. Heavy smoke and carbon monoxide were spreading through the building. The fire couldn't be attacked until the power was shut off, but patients couldn't receive adequate care without that power. 
More than 180 patients and all the staff treating them were at severe risk. Every single one of them had to be discharged or evacuated as the threat grew. Members of Group 2, who were on duty that morning, were preparing to hand off to members of Group 1 who were coming on shift, fortunately doubling the personnel available to respond. In the hours that followed, the fire went to 10 alarms. Fire, rescue, and EMS personnel from across the region responded to assist. Patients from stable to critical condition, including newborns and women in labor, were rescued through stairwells, sometimes carried down five flights of stairs. Well over 100 ambulances, wheelchair vans, and firefighting apparatus responded to transport patients, attack the fire, and ensure the safety of hospital personnel. By the time all patients were evacuated and the fire was brought under control at about 3.15 p.m., not a single injury was reported. And that's remarkable. This was the largest response in the city of Brockton's history. It was a massive logistical, operational, and accountability challenge at the intersection of public safety and public health. It required the highest levels of professionalism at every level. In every stage of the response, the Brockton Fire Department delivered. I am pleased to present the Stephen D. Cohn Fire Marshal's Award to Jeopardy Chiefs Scott Albanese and Jeff Marchetti on behalf of all those who took part in this massive and successful operation. Congratulations to these departments and the Deputy Fire Chiefs. Please welcome from the New Bedford Fire Department, District Chief Scott Gomes, Captain Kenneth Silva, Jr., Acting Lieutenant Brandon Medeiros, Lieutenant Luis Miranda, Lieutenant Stephen Torres, Firefighter Moasis Rodriguez, and Acting Lieutenant Marco de Lima, who is unable to attend. It was on the morning of October 3rd of 2022, residents were trapped inside a burning apartment building on Tremont Street. They called 911 to report the fire. District Chief Gomes was first on scene and was able to rescue a man from the rear stairwell on his own. Ladder 1 and Ladder 3 companies used an aerial ladder to rescue a man from a small section of roof outside a third floor window. Companies from Ladder 1 and Engine 1 rescued a disabled woman on the third floor under extremely high heat conditions as hose lines were being advanced. While removing this woman from the building, Lieutenant Torres used his protective gear as a shield to protect her from the almost untenable conditions as he carried her down the rear stairs. The heat was so extreme in that stairway that his gear and self-contained breathing apparatus were either charred, melted, or sustained severe thermal damage. That woman sustained first and second degree burns and spent over a month on a ventilator, but she did recover from her injuries. For their teamwork, which resulted in saving a life, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is proud to present these members of the New Bedford Fire Department with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. I also ask that uh, Lieutenant Stephen Torres please step forward. Lieutenant. For decisive actions that put his own life in jeopardy to save a disabled older adult, the Commonwealth is proud to present Lieutenant Stephen Torres 
with the 2023 Firefighter of the Year Medal of Valor. Will Lawrence Firefighter Paul King please step forward. Shortly after midnight on May 22nd, the Lawrence Fire Department responded to a nearby box alarm to the Spicket River for a reported car over the bridge. Upon arrival, they found a vehicle upside down in the water, with the passenger compartment also completely underwater. As crews started to change from turnout gear to survival suits, witnesses stated that the driver was drowning. Firefighter King was the chauffeur on ladder five and only in his station uniform when he fought his way through the fast moving river, opened the door and found the driver struggling to breathe. Firefighter King pulled the man to safety and when the man said two others were still inside, he returned to the submerged vehicle ready to make additional rescues. Finding no one, he came back to shore and coordinated a high angle technical rescue to raise the patient to EMS who were about 15 feet above. Dive teams did an extensive search and fortunately found no, indi no other indications of anybody else in the water. For his instinctive determination to save a drowning motorist while disregarding his own safety, the Commonwealth presents Firefighter Paul King with the 2023 Firefighter Year of the Year Medal of Valor. Well, most of us drove here today. Not many of us had to take a ferry boat. But I'd like to welcome the members of the Nantucket Fire Department to the stage. For those of you who have never been to Nantucket, it's a beautiful spot. And we all know how crazy and crowded it can be over there in the summertime. And then there are actually people who do work on the island. And these are some of them. It was July 9th, think about that, just a few days after the 4th of July holiday of 2022. This is prime summer season on Nantucket. In the iconic 388-year-old Veranda House Hotel is on fire. The hotel, the hotel is known for its island charm, but it also is a 10,000 square foot wood frame building nestled in a densely built downtown neighborhood. Every firefighter on the island knows that spot. It is tight. At 6.45 a.m., Captain Nate Barber was off duty and getting coffee with his wife when he saw the smoke and started to run towards that hotel. A guest outside said his son was still inside. So Captain Barber entered that building with no protective gear to search for that boy. After being turned back by the smoke, 
he found another way in by jumping up onto a roof and then a table and then through an open window. He searched through a smoke-filled hallway and led two people out onto that deck. The deck began to burn beneath them, but a neighbor threw a ground ladder for them to safely reach the ground. Captain Barber then re-entered that burning building with a neighbor to search for more occupants. He briefed the first arriving personnel and led, crew, led a crew of chief of firefighters to approximately two hours without rest until he himself was forced to go to the hospital. Think about this. Mutual aid is fundamental in the fire service. We've seen so many cases of that today. We've also seen today how every second counts in an emergency. But in Nantucket, or I should say on Nantucket, mutual aid is a ferry boat ride away. It's from off the island. It's not coming in seconds. It's not coming in minutes. It's coming in hours. A fire of this size and complexity might normally be fought by 100 firefighters. Instead, for the next three hours, about 20 Nantucket firefighters fought this fire with three engines and a ladder truck, and without a break. They did so to protect the neighborhood from becoming a complete inferno. The fire did spread to two nearby exposure homes, so they deployed hand lines and a master stream to keep it from spreading further. They made multiple entries into the exposed buildings in a determined effort to save the neighborhood from fiery destruction. After more than 12 hours, and with mutual aid from the Cape, crews were able to contain this massive fire to the original three buildings. All occupants and staff evacuated, and there were no civilian injuries. Four firefighters were injured, but all did recover. For their heroism and teamwork under extreme conditions, the Commonwealth is pleased to present members of the Nantucket Fire Department with the 2023 Governor's Group Citation for Meritorious Conduct. Would Captain Nate Barber please step forward? Captain Barber was born and raised on Nantucket. He's an islander. He's probably passed by that hotel thousands of times. And he actually suffered a heart attack during his response to this fire when he returned to work, after returning to work two months later. He said it was a little heart attack. I said, there's no such thing. A heart attack is a heart attack. For decisive actions that put his own life and safety in jeopardy to save others, while off duty and with no protective gear, the Commonwealth is proud to present Captain Nate Barber with the 2023 Firefighter of the Year Medal of Valor. Please welcome from the Holbrook Fire Department, Lieutenant Andrew Johnson, Firefighter Edward Baker Jr., Firefighter Patrick Campbell, who's not here, Firefighter John Holland, and Firefighter David Martineau. When Holbrook firefighters arrived at a fire on Belcher Street in the early morning of January 13th, they found heavy smoke in the area, electrical wires dangerously close to the structure, and the building itself was fully involved with fire. Moments earlier, police officers had helped an older adult escape through the basement, but her husband was still inside, and the intensifying smoke and fire 
made it impossible to say where. Meanwhile, a third person was trapped on the roof after escaping a third floor apartment. Firefighters immediately moved to rescue the trapped residents. Lieutenant Johnson and Firefighter Martineau successfully rescued the residents on the roof over the two ground ladders. Meanwhile, Firefighters Holland and Campbell entered the basement to search for the missing man as Firefighter Baker stretched an attack line into the rear of the building. Without a charged hose line, without, excuse me, without a charged hose line facing heavy fire and being electrocuted by the building's failing electrical system, they pushed on with the search of that basement where they found a medical walker, but no victim. They continued that search until conditions deteriorated so badly that they were forced to retreat. Firefighters Holland and Campbell re-entered the basement, now with the hose line from engine two. They were able to knock down that fire, but still could not find the missing occupant. Firefighters Holland and Martineau then entered the first floor apartment where they did locate an unconscious third occupant and started to remove him through near zero visibility. During this process, Firefighter Martineau suddenly fell through a section of the dining room floor, but by sheer strength and steady composure, he was able to stop his fall mid-torso, extricate himself, and continue with the rescue. Sadly, that third victim, a man in his 90s, succumbed to his injuries at the hospital, but two others survived that four-alarm fire thanks to the decisive and heroic efforts by all personnel. In recognition of their teamwork under extreme conditions and their heroic efforts despite life-threatening danger, the Commonwealth is pleased to present Lieutenant Johnson, Firefighters Baker, Campbell, Holland, and Martineau with the 2023 Firefighter of the Year Medal of Valor. You've heard the term heroes among us. Well, today you have met many of those heroes, and they're up on this stage right now. That does conclude our awards for this year. I'd like to thank our recipients this year for their remarkable actions, efforts, and achievements on behalf of the entire Commonwealth. I'd also like to thank their departments and their families for taking the time to join us on this very special day. Fan finally, I'd like to recognize all of our firefighters for answering the call every day, no matter what danger stands before them. Please stand as Fire Chief James Vona, immediate past president of the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, rings the fire bell in remembrance of all firefighters who have passed away in the line of duty followed by a moment of silence and then amazing grace by the Brock Brockton Greater Boston and Worcester Firefighter Pipes and Drums. Following amazing grace, Reverend Bruce Arbor will deliver the benediction.
creator and sustainer of us all. In the days that have passed, you have faithfully watched over us and given safe passage. We have heard this testimony and honored those who have answered the call, and you have safely brought them home. We ask now and pray that that same safety fall upon those who continue to serve this great commonwealth and their families and friends who waited home for their return. May you grant us your peace and safety in this and every day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Arbor, and thank you to everyone who contributed to the success, success of this event, including our sponsors. I'd like to take a moment to pay the bills. The Massachusetts Property Insurance Underwriting Association, National Grid, Comstar Ambulance Billing Service, Motorola Solutions, LW Bills Company, Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, Northeast Gas Association, Berman Adjusters, Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, Massachusetts Call Volunteer Firefighters Association, National Fire Protection Association. Thank you to you all, and yes, thank you to Mechanics Hall and the City of Worcester for their generosity. Please join us immediately following the conclusion of the ceremony for reception on the second floor. And today's reception, sponsored by the fine folks over there at Wegmans, Off the Rails Pizzeria Uno, Starbucks among others, so go enjoy. This does conclude our program. Please remain at your seats until the stage participants had left the hall. We wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving and a blessed holiday season. Thank you for joining us.